I'm Clarence Horton. On behalf of Historic Cabarrus and Cabarrus County, welcome to another historical segment in the story of Old Cabarrus County. We're standing today in front of Old Plant 9 in the giant Cannon Mills textile chain in Concord. For many years, this building stood vacant, as did other buildings across Piedmont, North Carolina, as textile production waned. Today it hums with activity as part of Shogren Hosiery Mills. As we stand in the shadow of this plant, however, it's not hard to imagine that so very long ago, machinery hummed and we heard the sound of voices as workers produced quality cotton goods to be shipped around the world. This old building has a unique, especially rich heritage, however. It was built in the early years of the 20th century as part of what one writer called the noble experiment of Warren C. Coleman. Mr. Coleman was a black Concord businessman who had achieved success, but who harbored a dream, the dream that a textile mill could be built and operated by persons of color. At that time in our history, it was an extraordinary dream, and it was dreamed by an extraordinary man. When construction on the Coleman Mill began in 1898, Warren Coleman was only 49 years of age, having been born into slavery in 1849. An early census in 1863 shows Warren Coleman, his mother Roxy, and his brothers Tom and Joe all living together in the home of Jane Coleman Mahan, who owned and operated a boarding house on the east side of Union Street. On that very site many years later, Mr. Coleman operated a general store and a marker on that site commemorates the operation of that store. Mr. Coleman also invested heavily in rental property and owned at his death over a hundred houses in Concord as well as many building lots in the Colberg section or what we now call the Logan community off Spring Street in Concord. For many years, Warren and his wife Jane lived in a lovely cottage on the southwestern corner of Church Street and Depot Street, now Cabarrus Avenue. It's now the site of a law office here in Concord. Mr. Coleman was a strong member of the AME Zion Church all of his life. He was a member for many years of Zion Hill AME Zion Church and later became a founding member of Price Memorial AME Zion Church in Concord. For many years, Mr. Coleman supported education. He knew that the secret to true freedom was through education, not just through hard work. So he supported the work locally at Scotia Seminary, which is now Barbara Scotia College, as well as Howard University, Livingston College, and Shaw University. In addition, he supported the building of the Coleman School at Welford, South Carolina. He was active in organizations which attempted to bring together black leaders for the purpose of pursuing the growth of black business. For that reason, he was a president and director and a strong founding member of the North Carolina Industrial Association. Although efforts had failed in many other cities, Mr. Coleman decided to invest all of his time and his life savings in an effort to build a textile plant in Concord which would be operated by black operatives entirely, something that had not been successfully done anywhere in the nation up to that time. Through his sheer grit and determination, he raised funds from both black and white investors, and the cornerstone of this great building was laid in a solemn Masonic ceremony on February 8, 1898. Although there were some setbacks due to economic conditions, this mill was producing quality yarn by 1901, yarn which was spun on machines operated by persons of color. When Warren Clay Coleman unexpectedly died on March 31, 1904, the entire town of Concord, both its white and black citizens, mourned its loss. He was a prominent businessman and a great civic leader. A large congregation witnessed his funeral in Price Memorial AME Zion Church, followed by his burial in the old campground cemetery 
which is being restored by volunteers in Concord. Eighty-four years later, his state erected an historical marker on U.S. Highway 601 commemorating his many accomplishments. Ninety-seven years after his death, a grateful Concord community changed the name of a portion of U.S. Highway 601 in his honor, Warren C. Coleman Boulevard. The great advantage to measuring the accomplishments of a person many years after his death is that we can measure the length of his shadow in the perspective that only the passage of time gives us. In the case of Mr. Coleman, we can measure his sacrifice by noting that he gave up all that he had, his fortune and his health, but that from that sacrifice did not come a noble experiment which failed, but an experiment which opened factory doors to black operatives, an experiment which energized black businessmen to found black businesses and create jobs for persons of their own race. We honor Mr. Coleman's sacrifice today because he taught us that you can make stepping stones out of life's obstacles. He served not only as an example for his race, but he served as an example for all races and for all of us. We're glad you could be with us. We hope you'll join us again real soon as we meet together to turn a few more pages in the history of this special place, this Cabarrus.